Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the expertise required for experienced piping design engineers. So without wasting time, let's get started. And before going to the video, let me give you some introduction about the course which I have recently launched in my website, which is exclusively for those who are interested to learn pipe routing. Because pipe routing is one of the very essential skill for piping design engineers. So one must have a good knowledge about a pipe routing in order to become a piping design engineer. And the very uh, intent of this course is that it covers diversified topics such as the pipe routing for pipe racks and equipment such as critical equipments and also the generic areas in process plant areas. And moreover, if you feel that I missed out any areas of this particular uh, content, you can always reach out to me because I have given my contact number in the description of the course. You can uh, ping me in my WhatsApp. We can discuss and sort out the other your clarifications. So I will be available to clarify your doubts. So that is about the course actually. If you want any more clarification or any more uh, detail about this course, you can always uh, ping me in my number. And also don't forget to watch the preview video of the course so that you will be able to understand the intent and the content of the course. Now let's get started with our video. So we are going to discuss about the expertise required for experienced piping design engineers. So as a first quality, one should have the ability to resolve the technical issues because that is what important, right? Being an experienced, we must have a good technical skill so that we can resolve the technical issues. But the issue is most of the people try to resolve the technical issues based on personal opinion. That's not how it should work. It should work in this way. You should always support your client with some standards or some calculations or some materials which are available in global platform. So basically, we should uh, support with any specifications that are that could be internal specification or external specification or with any local standards or international standards. But remember, always you should support your client with some facts and basis using some technical documents. It should not be just your own personal opinion because that is how you transfer the knowledge to your juniors and that is how they get to know how the technical problems are solved so that they also learn things actually. So this is one of the very important quality for those who are trying to become an experienced piping design engineers. And now let's go to the second quality. And the second quality is that ability to focus on the intent of the project. Because what happens is that when you start a project, you will have a lot of scopes and over the period of time in the life cycle of project, you may include a lot of things and you may exclude a lot of things. So finally, we should not, the ultimate aim of the project is that it should not disturb the intent of the project. So only experienced candidate can uh, manage this because they see things in totality. So one should always have a focus on the intent of the project because imagine you exclude many things and you include many things. But finally you realize at the end of the project that the core intent of the project is not met. So what will happen is that you have to start from zero, right? So to, in order to uh, avoid these kind of issues, one should always have the focus on the intent of the project. You have to be involved all the time. So that is what the very important quality for an experience. I mean to become an experienced piping design engineer or being an experienced piping design engineer. So now let's go to the third quality. The third quality is that one should aware about the each and every step and each and every stage of the workflow process. Basically, you should be well familiar about the workflow process. So what is workflow process? It's simple. Uh, you must know where to start and you must know where to end and you must be well familiar about each and every stage of this project. How to coordinate, where to coordinate and which discipline co to coordinate and what time to coordinate, what kind of input you have to give and what kind of input you should receive. So all these things you must be well familiarized about it. Only then you will be able to execute the project. If you are not aware about the workflow process, then how can you execute the project? So that's a very important question, right? 
So one must have a clear understanding about the each and every stage of project where to start and what are the documents needed to start and what are the documents that you have to share with other discipline what are the documents that you have to get it reviewed from other discipline so everything so basically you must have a clear cut understanding about the entire workflow systems and this is known as workflow process now let's go to the fourth quality the fourth quality is one must have an understanding about the value of cost and time that's because all projects are driven based on time factor time is money so time is actually directly proportional to money we all know right so that is one of the very important reason why we should understand the value of cost and time how it relates let's take an example let's take a, a situation where you have a pressure from projects to deliver your piping deliverables within a week time but you know that you cannot deliver within a week time or uh, you need more time basically so how to handle these kind of situation instead of going to say that you cannot deliver you have to consider the situation and why the project teams are pressurizing you nobody will pressurize you without any reason right so you have to understand why is it happening so if the the reason is genuine actually you can convey it. so this is what uh, we can deliver within a week time you can keep certain things in hold and you can always include the whole items in the next revision so this is the best way right instead of saying no actually you can uh, evaluate your uh, situation whether uh, you can really be able to deliver or you cannot really deliver or what kind of information that you have to keep in hold and what kind of information that you can include later on and uh, if you had to put a little more uh, effort in order to uh, get this done it is actually good for your company and your position and ultimately you're going to benefit and even if, if you are not going to benefit financially, at least you will gain this experience of how to handle this kind of situation. Ultimately, you are going to improve and your knowledge is going to improve and your expertise is going to improve. So one should have a clear understanding about the cost and time because if you don't understand the value of cost and time, you will simply go on saying that no, I cannot deliver. So you don't understand the fact that why and what kind of impact it may cause in future actually. The client may not be happy, the client may not give more projects to the company, ultimately you will end up in losing your job. So this should not happen, right? So one must understand the situation and the cost, the value of cost and time. So being an experience and this is one of the another important quality that we need to have because inexperienced people will react but experienced people should not react based on the timely pressure. You should always understand the, the intent of the pressure and intent of the request that is coming from dis different disciplines. Only then you will be able to handle the situation, right? Now let's go to the fifth quality. The fifth quality is that you should be a good leader. So being an experienced, every experienced person should be a good leader. So what does it mean actually? So being a good leader in the sense you should know how to handle your team and you should understand what is their view and you should be able to listen to them, you should be able to convey them, you should be able to motivate them. And remember, you should always know the ground level issues. If you are not able to see the ground level issues, then probably you will not be able to deliver your project on time because ultimately the team is working and we have to motivate the team. If there is any real issues, we have to address the team. Otherwise, you will not be able to get the work done, right? So what happens uh, if you are not able to deliver? Finally, your name will be spoiled and you will not be able to uh, promote it for the next position, uh, saying that you are not in a position to handle the, the situation. So ultimately, being a good leader, we have to be a good listener. Good listener in the sense, we have to be a genuine listener. Uh, just for a name check, if you simply listen to them and you don't uh, resolve their personal issues, their uh, uh, the, the management related issues. So what happens is that they are not happy with you and they will not be able to meet your requirement. So ultimately to become a good leader, you have to listen to them, you have to understand their uh, problems and you have to solve the problems. So that is how a leader works, right? You could be in any levels actually. You could be a low level leader or middle level leader or high level leader actually. But the ultimate, the quality of a leader is that you should be able to listen and understand and solve. So these are the three important qualities being a leader to have. If you do not have this quality, you will be facing a lot of problems within your team. So please try to cultivate these kind of habits and try to become a good leader. So these are the five qualities being an experience every piping design engineer should have guys. 
So I hope guys this video has helped you to understand what are the expertise required for experienced piping design engineers in order to grow consistently in a piping field. So I will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from Subhash Chandra.